My name is Dr. James Pacey from the Orland and Cohen Orthopedic Group on Long Island in New York. Today, I'll be speaking about biceps tenotomy versus lupintac biceps tenodesis. Biceps tenotomy and tenodesis have been around for quite some time. We know that biceps tenotomy overall can have comparable results in some studies with tenodesis techniques with good pain relief. However, biceps tenotomies have about a 20% issue where the biceps does not scar into place properly. This results in a Popeye deformity and potential cramping and fatigue pain of the biceps muscle, which may be avoided with biceps tenodesis. There are multiple sites to tenodesis the bicep, from the top of the groove to the subpectoral region. Outcomes based on placement of the biceps with tenodesis techniques have been fairly similar in terms of pain scores, ASES scores, as well as SANE scores. The BRASS group showed us very early on that tenodesing the bicep intraarticularly in a super groove position can have terrific outcomes. There was, after that, a push for subpectoral biceps tenodesis in some cases in the literature. There were concerns for higher revision rates with proximal tenodesis techniques, as well as a concern for groove pain after super pectoral biceps tenodesis. However, the literature has proven out that the outcomes of suprapectoral and subpectoral biceps tenodesis are similar. Another concern is tensioning of the bicep. There's concern with traditional biceps tenodesis techniques for both over and under tensioning the bicep. Socket and screw techniques certainly are at risk for over tensioning the bicep. For these reasons, we prefer to perform a top of the groove biceps tenodesis using the loop intact technique. The loop intact technique allows us to address groove pain by allowing the surgeon to choose the tension of the biceps tenodesis. In this case, there's no risk of overtensioning as it is an onlay technique. And based on the distance of the suture from the superior labrum, you can actually choose to under tension the bicep if you so choose or place it on an anatomic tension. Why does this immobilization matter? If a tendon doesn't move, the tendon can scar in place. This will then render any groove pathology irrelevant as the tendon is no longer moving in the groove and unable to cause pain. The loop intact technique is a simple knotless arthroscopic tenodesis technique that allows one to avoid cosmetic deformity and cramping seen with simple tenotomy, eliminate refractory groove pain seen with other proximal biceps tenodesis techniques, and gives the surgeon control of the biceps tension. We choose to fix the bicep at the most distally visualized portion of the bicep's groove, just above the subscapularis tendon and anterior to the supraspinatus tendon. This technique can be performed with an intact rotator cuff. It only requires one anterior portal site. It does not require finding the bicep's tendon in the subacromial space, does not require externalizing the tendon, and allows for use of one swivel lock or push lock anchor to secure the bicep. Additionally, as you'll see later, it can be combined with different rotator cuff procedures. The premise of this fixation involves a cinch stitch, which we call our loop. We then pierce the tendon to tack the tendon in place. An additional advantage is that the biceps tendon does not need to be removed from the joint in order to whip stitch it. Who do we perform these tenodesis techniques in? In middle-aged and elderly patients, patients with slap tears, partial biceps tendon tears, and those with associated rotator cuff pathology especially in those with superior third subscapularis tendons or anterior supraspinatus tendon tears that may have an unstable biceps tendon. In the younger or middle-aged patients, this can be used for patients with superior labrum tears, for revision of failed superior labrum tears, as well as for that unstable biceps tendon. So how do we use this around the shoulder? My preference for a standalone loop intact biceps tenodesis is to use the 3.9 biocomposite swivel lock loop intact kit. Here you'll see a patient with a superior labral tear and a partial undersurface supraspinatus tear. We chose in this situation to use the 3.9 kit as the subscapularis was intact. We'll debride the exit of the groove for some biologic healing and then set a clear crystal cannula superior to the biceps. We then set the suture within the swift stitch in order to cinch. Simply grasping the tail within the tip, we can then place that suture superior to the bicep, loading it into the joint. Without leaving the joint space, the passer is then sent inferior to the bicep, the suture retrieved, and cinched.
Once the suture is cinched in place, you then reload the tail of the suture. And this is where you're able to choose the tension on your bicep based on where you place this stitch. We then penetrate through the bicep, passing the tail for the loop and tack stitch. It's very important that this tail is placed on the groove side of the cinch stitch and not the labral side of the cinch stitch. Again, without leaving the joint, we're able to retrieve the suture and then release the bicep. We then pass the awl for the swivel lock anchor. Here the red handle is for the 3.9 version. Once the guide hole is made, we load the suture into the eyelet on the swivel lock, find our guide hole, and place our swivel lock anchor, securing the biceps tenodesis. And there you can see the end of the bicep sitting right at the edge of the groove with the chosen tension. We simply then release the excess suture and our tenodesis is complete. This technique is quick, it's simple, and it's done arthroscopically all inside and has been very reproducible. Thank you.